Perfect. Hello, everybody. My name is Sean Carr, and I am the Outreach and Engagement Manager here at Mockingbird. I use she, her pronouns. And just to let everyone know, we will be live streaming this event. So if you feel comfortable with being on camera, if you don't feel comfortable being on cam camera, please feel free to turn your camera off. Mostly we'll just be recording the speaking part and then we're also gonna be having a Q&A section. And at, for that part, we'll turn off the live streaming. Also, if you have, if everyone could turn off their mics until the Q&A session, that would be really helpful and great. Thank you. So welcome to our first ever youth programs open house. Thank you all for joining us here today. Our community partners and allies are the reason we're able to do all that we do. Thank you for your continued support. Today, we will be sharing with you all about who we are, what we do, and why we do it. We have a great hour planned for you all, so feel free to grab yourself a snack and remember to hydrate. Let's start, um, let's start the hour with a check-in question. So if you all could type in the chat, what draws you to advocacy work? And then I'll read out some of the responses. We can all take a second to do that. Change in service. I want to be a part of the solution. Love for my community. Making changes with the team. Make the system work for the US. Sorry, that was us. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yes, thank you. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe people, I should say, people that the system hasn't traditionally worked for. How about that? <laughs> Thank you. Sharing my personal experience, a few future advocates will know there are people they can relate to and feel comfortable with. Being youth and families feel empowered to live their lives seeing things change for the better. Thank you all for your responses. That is so empowering and inspiring to start the day, to always remind ourselves of why it is we do what we do, the hard work of advocacy. So thank you all for taking part in it. So for the first portion of our event, we will be going over our mission, how our program works towards that mission, and the events and opportunities that we have for youth advocates. The second portion will be centered around real stories. We'll be highlighting those who have grown within Mockingbird. They will, show, they will share how Mockingbird has impacted their lives and future. For the last portion, we will have a Q&A session where you are all invited to ask us any questions related to Mockingbird. So let's get started. I will be passing it over to Sierra, who will be going over the land and equity, land and equity acknowledgement and Mockingbird Youth Program's mission and values. Thanks, Sharn. I am really happy to be here. Uh, the work that we put on this um, really brought us closer as a team, and I just want to say thank you for joining us. It's really great to be here. So my name is Sierra Rogers. Um, I am a regional engagement coordinator for the Mockingbird Society um, here at the Central Region. I use the she and her pronouns, and I am currently on the Yakima Nation land. Um, I'm going to be starting us off with their land acknowledgement. And this is our statewide land acknowledgement. Um, so if everyone could pause, quiet, and reflect, um, we're going to open with this acknowledgement. We would like to recognize that we are on the land of the Coast Salish, Interior Salish, and Yakima Nation tribes. They have taken care of this land before it was colonized, and they continue to care for, honor, and defend their land. We honor with gratitude the land itself and all the Native tribes of Washington State. We would also like to recognize the historical and systemic exploitation and oppression of indigenous peoples, enslaved Africans, and other historically underinvested people, which has led to the disproportionality and representation of these communities among the youth we serve and whose voices we seek to elevate. I ask that we keep this in mind as we work to transform the systems that have and continue to impact us. In the chat, I am going to paste a website link so that if you are not sure which tribal land that you currently sit on, 
um, you can click that and put in your zip code and it'll tell you super easily. So I invite you to do that. And if you'd like, you can share where you're from um, in the chat as well. So next, um, I'm going to be going over the mission and vision of the Mockingbird Society. So what is the mission and vision of the Mockingbird Society? Well, we are a youth and young adult partnership transforming foster care and ending youth homelessness. Um, we are doing the best to unify the voices of youth experiencing foster care and youth homelessness. We advocate to eliminate injustices and change those systems to make a better tomorrow for the youth growing after. So we work with young people and the families to transform foster care and end youth and young adult homelessness. We train youth who have been homeless or have been in the foster care system so that they could be their very own best advocate. We also change policies and perceptions that stand in the way of every young person having a safe, stable home and a loving family. Um, we will also be going over um, the three main programs that the Mockingbird Society has here. So the very first one that I will be introducing um, is uh, the Mockingbird Family Model. So this includes uh, Mockingbird Family and the Family Programs, which is a way of delivering foster care services modeled on the extended family structure. We believe in taking good care of the people who take good care of our young people. So that's the first one. The next section or program um, is the public policy and advocacy portion. This department focuses on direct advocacy and the systems reform part that Mockingbird does. And the last part, the really big, huge, important part um, is the youth programs. Um, this includes the Mockingbird Youth Network and the YA yeah program. The Mockingbird Youth Network is a youth development program with a dual focus on policy and the youth development. Our regional chapters bring together young people from across the state, ages 13 to 26, who have experienced foster care or homelessness to help them advocate for and gain access to the resources needed to thrive in life. The YAH chapter, which stands for Youth Advocates Ending Homelessness, is located in Seattle and focuses solely on involving youth and young adults in ending homelessness. And um, with that, I would love to introduce Ryan, who will be explaining the advocacy cycle and those regional chapters. Hi, everyone. My name is Ryan Tobiasen. I use all pronouns. I am the regional engagement specialist for the Eastern chapter. I would like to recognize that I am on the land of the Shipiwashu tribe. And the first thing that I'm delighted to talk with you guys about today is the advocacy cycle. As you see in the diagram above, March through May, we focus on identifying barriers in the foster and homeless systems. June through August, we focus on finding the best solutions for the challenges we identified the previous months. We then meet with all of the chapters statewide and focus on presenting our topics at Summit. After we receive feedback from the professionals at Summit, youth in their chapters will reevaluate re their asks and or solutions and finalize them between September and November. The fourth and final phase of our advocacy cycle is, advocate being, is advocating for change. This takes place from December to February. This final phase of our cycle is the most exciting because that's when we take our proposals that we have worked on throughout the whole year all the way up to Olympia and ad advocate directly for legislation to take action. This cycle is entirely youth-led. Every month, each region has a chapter meeting. They invite youth who have experience with the foster and or homeless systems to join. Since they have firsthand experience, their expertise on the subjects of the systems that impacted them is vital to our work. We ask those young people, what can the system do for to better? Let me restart that, excuse me. <laughs> the question we ask those young people are, what can the system do better for generations of youth behind you? Like one of our founding fathers, Jim Theophilus says, it's for the five-year-old who doesn't know they're going to be in foster care the next day. Sometimes the issue that we bring to light doesn't always get past the first time, but that doesn't mean that we will never stop advocating for what's right. And even if you aren't somebody who is directly impacted by these systems, it's still important to encourage others to do so. For example, maybe that five-year-old is your niece or nephew. Maybe that five-year-old is your neighbor's child. Maybe that five-year-old lost their parents in some tragic accident. Something that we can all agree on is that the systems are broken and Mockingbird uses the voices of those who have been affected to change it and better it and help youth live successful and fulfilling lives when they exit these systems. We recognize the power of youth voice and the change that comes from it. 
we harness the power of youth voice in these meetings to ensure that necessary change can occur. Now that you know a little bit more about what we do in our chapter meetings and the atmosphere we create, I would like to pass the mic back to Sierra to talk more about the different roles you as a youth can take on. Sierra? Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, so I'll go briefly over kind of like what the roles within these chapters are. Um, so uh, in the next slide, we have um, what's first a chapter participant. Um, oh, I see. Um, that map, if you want to go back and show that map, actually, I can explain that a little bit. So we currently have four chapters. The purple side is what you see as Peninsula chapter. So an engagement coordinator leads that region. Um, the orange is the Seattle slash Puget Sound chapter. Green is Central chapter and the blue is Eastern chapter. And so whichever county that they fall into, that will be their chapter. And that's the um, place where they'll hold the meetings for and each team will develop policies. But we'll talk more about that. Um, I will go into the next slide and talk about the chapter roles. So a chapter participant or a chapter member. A chapter member um, is a volunteer participant. They attend chapter meetings, stay in contact with regional engagement coordinators, like myself. Um, they participate at their capacity and follow group agreements. They have the opportunity to attend chapter meetings, community engagement events, and Mockingbird Society annual events. Next, we have what is a leadership team member. Um, they are also a volunteer participant. They attend leadership team meetings, back up the chapter leaders for chapter meetings. They also help um, with meeting planning and facilitation, plus all that's in the chapter participation section. So they're a little bit of both. And finally, we have a chapter leader. A chapter leader um, is also a volunteer participant. They attend leadership team meetings, um, lead the chapter meetings, and represent chapters at state leadership council meetings. Um, they support the regional engagement coordinators and they support um, our outreach efforts. Their assistance to the chapter and the regional engagement coordinator, they're a role model for all members and they engage and elevate other members um, within the chapter. And so um, those four uh, regions that you saw, we meet as a group regularly um, and talk about that advocacy cycle and some of the work that we're working on, support each other, check in. Um, and really develop a um, strong connection um, within the org. And next, I will be um, letting Sharn take away with further um, information on annual events. Perfect, thank you, Sierra. So we have various events and opportunities that take place for youth to advocate for themselves and the issues that matter to them. And just to reiterate, youth are stipend for their involvement in our events. We do believe in making sure that people are compensated for their time and effort. Mockingbird has its very own newspaper titled Mockingbird Times. Mockingbird Times welcomes submissions of articles, poetry, artwork, and photography from our young readers who have experience in foster care and poor homelessness. Next, we have Summit, which is our annual event. It takes place during phase two of our advocacy cycle titled Defining Solutions. So this is an opportunity for professional development to take place. It provides real world experience presenting policy issues and solutions to development advisors. And then for this, Mockingbird partners with organizations that help youth refine their solutions. And then we have Youth Advocacy Day, which takes place during the final phase of the advocacy cycle titled Advocating for Change. Youth Advocacy Day is a chance to make sure that youth voice is heard about issues that youth care about. It's armed with youth-inspired legislative agenda. Youth and youth advocates meet with elected, elected officials to talk about why issues matter to them. This day includes speeches by young people, policymakers, and fellow advocates. So to put all the work that youth have done over the years into perspective, into perce perspective, we will be playing a short video of youth participating in our advocacy cycle and advocating for policy change. After that video, I will pass it over to Lauren, who is from our policy and advocacy team, and she will highlight some of our legislative wins over the years. I think that there's a voice that matters in this conversation, and that is of the young people themselves. I'm part of the foster care community, and I'm here speaking on behalf of the Mockingbird Society. 
Today I'm here to give you testimony in support of Senate Bill 6274. Staying in detention never got to the root of my problems, and in fact has made the situation at home worse. Our organization has identified that it is seemingly impossible for youth of care to obtain a driver's license. You have to go through the stress, confusion, anger, being threatened. Yeah. Her actions are a part of being a teenager. Okay, this is Senate Bill 5290. I'm here to testify in support of House Bill 2330. The measure that will help our foster kids to transition successfully to adulthood by offering services for a longer period. Thank you so much, Sharn. Um, Claire, I see your comment about um, in the chat, and that video makes me cry in a good way every time, even though I've seen it. I've seen it before. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Lauren Frederick. I'm the public policy and advocacy coordinator at the uh, manager at the Mockingbird Society, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. And um, I am one member of a small but mighty team of four people. Um, who make up our public policy and advocacy team. Um, so we've got two folks who work mostly on state level um, items and then two folks who work mostly on King County level items. Um, so young people have opportunities to plug in on both of those efforts if they want to join us in that work. Um, and really we can't do that work um, without them and without all of you. It's wonderful to see so many um, um, faces that we know and love um, who have helped us on these efforts over the years. Thank you for being here and really great to see some new faces as well. So I just wanted to highlight briefly um, a couple of legislative wins that you'll see on the slides here coming up. Um, so we have had upwards of 57 legislative wins in the 20 years since, more than 20 years since Mockingbird's been in existence. Um, which is, is a lot, and we know there's still more work to do. And we know that um, we do this work in partnership with all of you and with young people. And so I'm just really um, proud and excited to highlight a couple of wins at this moment. Um, so one of the, um, one of the uh, items to just give a shout out to is extended foster care. So in our state, um, for many years, um, young people would have to be exited from foster care at the age of 18 with no um, option of staying on after that. And as we know, that um, proved to be an incredible hardship for a lot of young people. And so starting in two, 2006, um, the Mockingbird Society um, worked um, with many of you and with young people to um, get started on extended foster care. And this is a multi-year effort, so it took um, more than 11 years to, to finally get it done, but we got a piece of it done every year until um, we felt that we had reached a place where every young person would be eligible for this program um, to stay in foster care through age 21 in our state, um, which is um, huge. And we know there's still work to, to do here to improve the program, but um, it's in place and um, it's something to build on. And so that's a huge uh, multi-year effort that took many, many hands. Um, and so that's just something to celebrate. Um, and then um, another um, example would be, this is just a one-year um, project, but IDs with ease. And in the video, you saw a young person speaking to this, um, but the fact that youth experiencing homelessness um, were facing major barriers to getting um, their IDs. And they still are, and there's still work to do here. But in 2020, we were able to um, help get a bill passed, um, which will reduce, which reduced the cost of ID for youth under 25 who are experiencing homelessness um, to $5, which was really great. And then also directing the Department of Licensing to do a new and streamlined process so that young people would have an easier way to get their IDs and not so many hoops to jump through and so many documents to get and all that. So um, still working to make sure that that can get improved and be the best it can be, but it is in place. And that was, that's something that just, that took a year to happen. So we work on all levels of whether it's a, you know, a short term or long term. Um, and then the last thing I'll highlight is um, a budget item. So we work with the budget as well. And that was an extended foster care budget item from this year. Um, I think it might actually be on the next slide. We could go to that. And 
we this year were able to um, get $10.6 million in the budget um, so that young people who we've extended foster care in this pandemic, because we, we know we're still in a pandemic, even though we even though, you know, we're trying to move out of it, we people are still very impacted and some much more than others. So um, we were able to get this money into the budget so young people aging out of extended foster care in this pandemic could continue to get that monthly foster care payment um, to help them stay on their feet, um, hopefully keep that roof over their head and just have more stability um, through June 2023 and to have that be retroactive for young people who had already aged out of foster care in the pandemic. So I just wanted to highlight a few things that we're really proud of and note that um, we welcome all of you and, and young people to join us in future efforts that, um, that will build on these. And um, thank you so much. I'm happy to, to pass it on to the next folks who will share the next phase of this um, program with you all. Thank you so much, Lauren, for sharing our legislative wins over the years. Um, and as Liz said in the chat, thank you to our partners on the call who are part of those successes as well. So next we will have James, who is our interim engagement coordinator and also has been a Mockingbird youth for quite a time now. He will be sharing his experiences as a youth in Mockingbird. Thank you, Sean. Good evening, my name is James Sheard. I go by he, him, his pronouns. I am the intermedium Seattle region for the Mockingbird Society Youth Chapters. Um, I've been involved with Mockingbird since January 2014. I started off as a chapter member slowly over the years, built up as a leadership, and then became chapter leader. Um, I've done so much wonderful work with Mockingbird over the years, and I decided to step in as the intermediate engagement specialist so I can potentially train or support the next generation or cohort of foster care and homeless youth advocates. Thank you. And I will pass it back to Sean. Thank you, James. Um, 